It is very common in the jam band world to take a blues song, speed it up a lot, give it some happier lyrics, and have the lead guitar player play a really colorful type of improvised solo on top of it. It's not necessarily the blues, it comes from the blues, but for us guitar players, improvising over it could be frightening because of the speed and also there's usually so much color. If you're a fan of any jam band, they all have one of these songs. So I'm going to show you how to survive it with the simplest trick and it works every time. So let's get down to it. Today we're going to be using a backing track of an E blues. Okay, it's E, you know, my distortion's on, let's change it. Uh, it's an E, and the camera wobbled, uh, E, uh, then an A, back to the E, you'll hear the whole thing. And the turnaround here is instead of B, A, E, it's going to go B, G, A, E. You'll hear it. It really doesn't make a huge difference because you're going to be using the E minor pentatonic to start anyway. I just want to show you. Uh, all these jam bands put a little bit of twists on it, and this is one of them. So what is this secret that I'm withholding that I should tell you right away? Uh, it is very, very simple. It's you, you want to change the rhythm and make it very, very stark, like stand out. Change your rhythm right before the chord changes. In a 12-bar blues, you have four bars of the E. On that last bar, or I should say it's the pinky, on the last bar of the E, you're going to change the rhythm, whatever you are doing, it's a lead into the A. You have two bars of A on that last bar of the A. You're going to change your rhythm starkly, really like make it stand out so that when you go back to the E, it sounds like you caught on again. And this is how these guitar players keep you kind of listening and like, oh my gosh, this sounds so good. And I'm going to show you how it works after I nick my guitar. All right, so um, I'm going to keep my, my tone clean for this one. I'm just going to use my uh, my E blue scale, right? Just like wherever you are, I think that the easiest one to use right now is just E blue scale. Right? Now, say you can't play too fast. Say you're like, oh, okay, we're playing a blues, it's really fast. You don't have to play fast. As long as you do this, you can kind of keep it sparse and controlled. As long as you change your rhythm right before the chord change, magic will happen. Let me show you. I'm not gonna try and solo too fast, but I will change my rhythm, listen for it. Here we go. screen was happening. If you were just listening to that and you're in your jam band, let's just say you're just using the pentatonic. I'm going to give you different scales to use and show you. You can make it more complex. Um, you already gave the listener something to listen to. That wasn't too complex, but nonetheless, it had that color, had that movement that I think I love from these high speed kind of jam based blues songs. So let me show you just, if you're if you're past that, let's just say, hey, you know, I use more than just the pentatonic. Great, let me show you that it works with that too. And if you're not here yet, check out my Caged Masterclass and also check out my Jerry Garcia Soloing Masterclass. That will help you out tremendously with the sound we're about to get. All right, so, what I'm going to do in this case here is I'm going to look at my E chord, my A chord, my B, my G, and my A chord. Those are all the chords that are involved in this song. And I'm going to know those arpeggios, up and down. I'm going to know all of them. Right? And I'm going to, I can do it for all. But more importantly, I'm going to solo with my pentatonic or blue scale. But at any moment, if I'm in any chord, of course, I could, you know, sew together my arpeggios. This is where that Jerry Garcia video comes in, you know, one, three, uh, four, flat five, five. You know, it's very common stuff. And so if you watch that video, uh, if you're here, like if you understand that, great. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to say to myself, no matter what I do, as long as I, you know, change that rhythm. As long as I uh, give you something different, right, for the chord change, all is good. For this time around, I'm going to put on my distortion, and let's see 
if you can hear the same effect, we're putting more uh, ingredients in the stew, but nonetheless, it's gonna sound good and purposeful because of what we're doing. Here we go. keeping it simple, right here on the 12th fret, but everything, I just pointed out on the screen, I really wasn't paying attention too much to developing the tension through what notes I was playing. I was developing that tension movement through the rhythm. If you like this stuff and you want to practice it more, come join me on Patreon. Of course, I'll be doing it all over the fretboard in that E, also probably doing it in A, and giving you just different rhythm ideas on how to do it, from slow rhythms and sparse rhythms to fast rhythms and what I choose. I really hope you enjoyed this kind of shorter video, I think. Use the rhythm. Use the rhythm right before those chord changes. I'll stop talking. Thank you so much for being here. See you again on another episode of Stitch Method. Bye-bye.